Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And you join me up in orbit over Taras, where we've got a, now got a nice, well, yes, we've got a nice steady flow of um, of stuff coming through again. So we've, you might remember that last week we were seeing a big shortage of the immersite crystals and immersion plates coming through up here, and that was due to a lack of the um, the mineral water. And so I finally finished off all the mineral water supplies down on the planet meaning that we have a drop-off station down here that's where the tanks will fill up as um and then it's being pushed through now I've I've not done this in the best possible way we've got the uh, we've got it all being pumped through into these tanks over here and then pumped on from there and the downside of that is it means that when a train comes down yeah you end up with this sort of thing when you've got quite a lot of what of the fluid um and we won't actually empty this train out until these two tanks empty or at least mostly empty uh, which is it means we don't balance the usage between the two parts of the train very well. However, I think we're getting through a small enough amount of it, but it doesn't really matter. The system is probably going to be sufficient. However, if I have the time, or if I see any or inclination, or if I see any problems with it, then I could either put in an additional pipe coming off the top of here, that pump where so the, uh, the mineral water is pumped around the top and goes into the pipe over here, instead of going through the middle. Or I could attach cables to these tanks and then monitor how much is in both of them and then tell this pump to run when there's more in this side than there is in this side. Both of those things are possible, but at this point, it hasn't really felt worth doing. We've got enough flowing through with the system set up like this that I don't think it's going to cause any problems. I'm just aware that it's not not set up as nicely as it could be. And so that's now being running down this quite long pipe comes over here um, all the way through into and I've linked it back in over here which is where we had the mineral water coming in before from the mine up at the top here and which I and I haven't bothered to rip up all of this because um, laziness mostly and so that means it's now just being pumped in and, and going down here we've got these tanks down here that will fill that they're filled up by the pump here making sure they never go above 5,000 which is good because that means that we always have enough uh, capacity for the for the overflow from the core processing and so we have core processing happening where is it over here somewhere yes down here and this is producing a small amount of mineral water as, you're, as, you, as you've seen before but we want to make sure that gets used up first and then we top it up from the supply that's being brought down from orbit and so this system is now working as you can see we've got a nice flood of well everything coming through um, we've got the crystals pouring along here we've got the plates coming out and the sulfur pour absolutely pouring out down here I also spent quite a bit of time fiddling around with the disposal belts in order to try and get everything being taken away at the right sort of rate so at the moment we have this belt here which is taking away initially is taking away all of the byproducts from the uh, core processing. So we've got stone coming down here where it's being made from the uh, the imosite core chunk processing and then down here we're processing the vanilla core chunks into all of the stuff that comes out of those and then that's being passed along here um, on, on this belt and there's a bit of space on it. The belt isn't completely full and so we're then also bringing through a certain amount of the sulfur because imosite processing produces huge amounts of sulfur as a byproduct. Now it does use a little bit of it because we need to make some sulfuric acid but it's still despite that it still produces quite a lot of excess and so we need to get rid of all of that and so the way we're doing that is, is again putting as much of it as we can onto this belt down here. However, I prioritise the input that's coming from the core processing because we need to keep that flowing, otherwise the system just jams up all the way back up through here. And so, because this belt isn't isn't sufficient to take away all of that sulphur, I've also got it being split off over here as a slightly lower priority, and then put onto the uh, the glass belt over here. So this is the one that's taking away the sand from the next stage of processing. Yes, there's a lot of stages here, <laughs> and that's being turned into what's well, being turned into silicon up here, which has also been put onto a disposal belt. But that's all being nearly all being used up, as you can see. There's not very much making. In fact, there's none making it out onto the belt up here. And so the uh, excess sand is then being passed through into here to be made into glass, which can then be put onto the belt and, and taken away. And that means there's a bit of spare sp room on the belt down here where we can put a bit more of the sulphur. However, that does seem to be mostly taking it from the left or from the port side of the belt. The starboard side is, is still struggling quite a lot. Although, looking back up here, it seems to be that it's the... Oh, I don't know. They're, they're, it is just about hanging on, but it feels like it could be a little bit faster. That said, if we look up here, you can see that this, this backlog isn't going all the way back to the machines where it's coming out. And the same over here. So the sulphur is being disposed of quickly enough. The Interestingly, the crystals don't seem to be. And there's no other waste going onto the crystals. So now the limiting factor with how fast we can um, produce this stuff is the rate that this belt here is capable of taking it away. And this is a this is a this is an express transport belt. So I think that's a green one looking at it. Yeah, oh no, but it turns blue here. So it's advanced here and then express here. So it's a blue belt. So if we want to get more crystal out, we would just have to upgrade this blue belt to something a bit better. Um, and that might be worth considering. We'll have a look and see how the, uh, how the crystal supply is getting on. But... Yeah, there is a the, the, that that is the bottleneck. We are we are pumping this through at a solid blue belt, and maybe that's not enough. It's certainly not enough for the production, but it might be enough for consumption. And looking at uh, Immersite crystal production over the last hour, well, it's um it dropped off for quite a long time here. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, that'll be because of the lack of mineral water. So that that was when it was failed, and now it's kicked back in again. Um, 
and we've been producing slightly more than we've been using over the last hour. However, it's gone completely flat at the end here, and I suspect these spikes are each time the train runs, the, the, the train takes the MSI to somewhere where it's needed, and we use it, and we, it all gets used up immediately, almost immediately, so it runs out again, and then the train comes through again. Um, that's my guess. I don't have a huge amount of evidence for this. Um, then here it seemed to improve a bit. We, we, we were using it a bit more solidly, but now over here it stopped completely, and I'm almost certain that's going to be because we've run out over in Norbit. So, uh, things are now working again after fixing the, uh, the MSI problem here. However, it still hasn't recovered properly, and we, are, we don't have a good, good amount coming through. So this is still... Uh, if I'm being optimistic, I might say it's filling buffers, but that might be being a bit overly optimistic. I, I, I'm honestly not really sure. But we do seem to be, we're pumping it out of here into the train as fast as it's coming in. So the train here is not, is not a, uh, a limiting factor. Up in orbit, there is a ship here it's getting chucked into. And when it leaves, there is a second ship that will come back in and then start picking it up again. So I think the logistics here are probably going to be okay. We'll just need to keep a bit of an eye on it after this ship has gone and delivered and maybe the other ones run as well. And try and work out whether we're actually producing it fast enough, whether it's being, whether it's being generated fast enough, whether it's being, and, how, and what sort of rate we're using it up at. So there's a, a few potential problems in here, but the system seems to be mostly kind of probably running, I think. Before I leave Taras and related to the mineral water things I was talking about earlier, I should mention that I put in a, um, a mildly interesting balancing system down here. So we've got the four tanks in order to load up the four fluid wagons in the train, and in order to make sure that they balance reasonably well between them, because we're just pumping the uh, the mineral water in at one end over here. I've set up a system over here where we are we're taking the the quantity of mineral water in the uh, in the tank here, adding zero to it and outputting it as an M signal. That is then passed onto this tank, and then in, more importantly into this pump here. And this is saying if M is greater than mineral water, then it should run, then it should pump. And that means so the the M is the is the amount in this tank, and the mineral water is the amount in this tank. So it's we're, essentially we're saying if there's more in this tank than there is in this tank, then pump it through. That's repeated again over here. So we've got again exactly the same thing. We're looking at the amount of mineral water in this tank, and those M signals are being ignored because we're only looking at the uh, the mineral water input. So that's fine. Then we're outputting that as an M. The uh, and the pump is working in exactly the same way. If there's more, if there's more in this tank than this tank, push through. And again over here, so that this, it, it it works to keep all of the tanks balanced. When a train comes in and pulls from all of them, then as this one fills up and goes has more than this one, it'll be passed along and along and along. So it keeps the whole system balanced rather than just putting in pumps that run all the time. Which would mean if we had a little bit of a shortage of mineral water and we didn't have quite as much over here as we ideally wanted, uh, and the tanks weren't all full, we'd end up with all of it in this tank and then maybe this tank, and these two wouldn't be wouldn't get any at all, so the train wouldn't fill up, so it wouldn't go, and then we'd have all kinds of problems. So keeping the tank's balance is important, and this is one way to do it. Ah, over in Norbit we can see that the other Taras ship has arrived here, and relatively recently, because it's still unloading, and so that means we have a nice healthy flood of crystals and plates coming through out of the airship, and going into the uh, into the systems up here, where they can then be put into the train. So that's probably going to be cause, cause some more of those spikes we were seeing on the production graph, at least once the train has had a chance to, to run back and forth a few times, because we've now got, yeah, we've got a We've got a good supply of plates, and we have a not so good supply of crystals. But the crystals are still being passed through, so um, we'll, that that will top up a little bit. But uh, there's another there's another three thousand, three and or three and a half thousand crystal in here. Yeah, I'd say we've got a good healthy supply of plates now, but not as much crystal as I would like to see. So yes, maybe going over and upgrading that belt to a green one, or maybe even a purple one over on the other planet would be a good idea, just in order to get as much stuff through here as we can of the things we specifically want. But the system is basically sort of kind of mostly theoretically working. <laughs> this, um, everything is being transported through as we would expect. It's just I, th I, th I think the crystals are still going to be in a bit, in a bit of a shortage. Oh, and this ship is now filled up so it can head off and then go and um, swap over with the other one over in uh, Terras orbit. Continuing over in Norbit, well, we are trying to do science, and yep, that has, this has stopped again, this time because of energy science, so we'll go and look at that in a moment. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at was the uh, disposal systems over here, where we had a lot of blank data, or blank and junk and miscellaneous rubbish data cards, trying to be removed, I think, from here, where the advanced science is coming through. So you can see we're getting quite a lot of junk data cards on here, and broken ones as well, uh, and those need to be disposed of. And previously, we had a, we had a sort of system where this, this belt looped around, like it is at the moment, and down to here, where it's side-loading onto a belt here, which isn't great. Uh, in the first place, but you know that that wasn't the real problem. The real problem was it was also side loading here, and there were a lot of there was a lot of junk coming down the other belt from up here, and all of it was and most of it was on the left hand side, and so that meant that down here we weren't able to pass out the junk data cards from the advanced science. They were just getting stuck here, and that backed up all the way through here, and that was causing the advanced science production to fail, which is a, a fairly major problem as you can imagine, especially as this belt over here wasn't full, so there was definite uh, possibility for upgrades over here, and so in order to fix that I've 
done a fairly simple job here where I put in a, a splitter here. It seems to be a deep space one and they don't they don't mesh together graphically very nicely, but they will pass all the items through. I don't know why this is a deep space splitter. Maybe we're going to do some more upgrades there. I'm not sure. But anyway, it wasn't working. Now, now, and, and now it's working much better because with the advanced stuff, it's all going on to the starboard side of this belt, and it was the port side of this one that was full. So now we're filling up both sides of it, and now there's plenty of capacity for it to all disappear down the uh, disposal chute down here and go into the um, into into the main disposal system down here. This is also causing. Uh, I'm not going to say it was causing problems because it, it was absolutely fine, but we ended up with quite a lot of. We, we ended up with prioritizing the input on this belt instead of instead of this belt, as you can see, as it's set up here with the with the input priority there, um, and this. And that meant that we, we had a bit of a backlog going along here, but that's fine because that just goes back to the material science and the material science will also output on the other two belts as well. So even if it does jam up on this one, it's still fine because it'll, it'll still use the others and we will have plenty of space for everything to be brought out. Now we could go through and put in better balancing systems on the disposal system. It, 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 I don't think it'd be worth it though. I think just sort of cobbling it in like this is absolutely fine really. And the system is mostly working. However, as hinted at, because we seem to have run out of energy science, the science has shut down and therefore there isn't any junk being chucked out here. I imagine this is going to be the usual, oh dear, we've run out of quantum processors problem. But let's let's follow it up and have a quick look. So up here, uh, yes, yes it is. We've run out of quantum processors up here, so we're not able to make the, uh, the tier 4 science packs. Therefore, the factory spaceship 6 that we're doing at the moment, which requires uh, tier 4 energy science, is not running. Now, I imagine there's probably going to be... Uh, there's probably going to be a shortage of something, so let's have a let's have a look. Where is where is the uh, where are the quantum processors being made? It's here, and yes, we've run out of something once again. Oh, this is the Imosite crystals, isn't it? Yes, there we go. So it's actually Imosite crystals rather than rather than necessarily this processing area here. So hopefully the boost we've given to the uh, the system with with the uh, extra Imosite crystal production is now going to allow us to get this system these uh, quantum processor production machines up and running properly. We'll feed those through into here. The train can take them all. Yada yada yada, and hopefully we'll actually be able to get the science running again. But yeah, that's an, yet another problem there. Now, I think these crystals are being double-handled. They're being brought up from uh, down on Norvis in the, in the train that brings up everything for the energy science area. And yes, here it is. So you can see, you can see we're actually feeding in some Imosite crystals at the moment. They're not coming through very quickly. Probably because we have, I don't know, a blue belt bringing them in and then it's being split between going up here and going off to somewhere else that requires them as well, uh, over here. And yet they're flowing through merrily over... Oh, actually... Yes, yes, they are flowing in over here as well. So we're trying to load, yeah, we're trying to load up two trains at the same time. We don't have very many MSI crystals anyway, but I think this is one of those things where eventually, as long as we keep bringing in more and more and more and more and keep building up the buffers, it will eventually potentially be okay. The other problem we have is that this train isn't filling up all that well. Uh, we're not asking for enough stuff, essentially, so the train doesn't leave as often, as, quite as often as I'd like it to. I might need to put in one of those things that says if there's stuff missing up in space and the train is down here, then it should go anyway even if it isn't completely full. But for now, I could tell it to go go manually, because it's got a lot of Imosite crystal in it. So we send that round there. If you go up the elevator, and then arrive over here where it can do it, where it can unload all of the um, all these crystals we pass through. They'll come down the belt, and then we can actually start making those hot, those quantum processes again. And that would be nice. Um, so yeah, once again, I think this train needs a little bit of a chivying, um, or a system that will tell it to depart a bit more a bit more frequently when there's any kind of when there's an actual shortages up here in space. I also noted coming back to science that we ha seem to have. It's not a shortage of significant data, but it was it was struggling a little bit. So um, there was the uh, this belt here was only full to about here, and it wasn't going it wasn't getting shorter, it wasn't getting longer. We seemed so it seemed to be a healthy amount that and we and it was quite stable, but we weren't feeding it into onto this belt quite as quickly as I would have liked us to. And looking back over here, it seems to be that uh, when it was when it was in that state, we only had most of these machines working. There were two or three at the end that weren't running um, because we couldn't get rid of all of the stuff out of here fast enough. So the, the data cards that get fed out. Out, were running solidly along this belt. They're keeping the, or rather, they were running solidly along these belts over here because this drops down to being only a 45 per second instead of the 90 per second we've got here. And so this is a slightly tricky one to work out how to fix because we don't want to speed the belts up in this area because that could mean that we then end up sending more um, data cards out down this way down the disposal system uh, when we actually need to send them up here to be made into other science packs or other insights. And so we don't really want to change the speed of the belts around here because that, as I say, that could cause problems. But also we need to take them away faster somehow. So this is a bit of a puzzler and I'm not really sure how we're going to fix this one. That said, on the other hand, we do seem to just about have them coming through fast enough along here, so maybe that means it's okay? Perhaps the answer would be to upgrade up to, to upgrade this bit here and then also upgrade the belt that's running up here so we have a bit more 
capacity available to take the uh, the data cards away a bit more quickly. Or maybe feed them onto both sides of the belt up here so we've got twice as many going through. Uh, both of those are certainly possibilities. We just dis need to decide what we want to do and whether, and also whether it's worth actually making any changes to this at all. I talked last week about how we were having some problems with the astro science because things were, because um, we weren't getting these exposed frames being passed through quickly enough. And at the time, I was thinking it was because I'd started using them a lot more, and these telescopes couldn't just couldn't keep up. And that was sort of true, but it wasn't actually that the telescopes couldn't keep up. It was a coolant problem. We weren't we weren't producing the uh, the cool thermofluid fast or the cold thermofluid fast enough. And so in order to improve uh, the things over here a little bit, I put it in, in the coolant area. Well, the ideal would be to rip it all out and put in one of the more modern systems like the one you, you'll have seen over here where we're using hypercoolers and ducts and, and basically this design has a much, much higher throughput and then you can run ducts down to wherever you need the coolant as well and it's all much, much, much better. However, I didn't really want to go in and do that sort of level of rebuild in the astrocyte area because well, we're so close to the end of the game, it didn't seem worth the effort. And so it was a sort of a stopgap. I've put in these uh, these pumps along here. So instead of all of the uh, the cool thermofluid having to go all the way up the pipe along here into this tank and then back out again, when, there's, when the tank over here isn't full, it can be pushed straight through from these pipes down into this pipe. And that's why there's a red cable running all the way along here. We're saying only push it through when there is uh, less than 100,000 in the tank. So when the tank is less than half full, in order to make sure that there's always plenty of room in the tank here for, for any um, any cool thermofluid that comes back up the pipes from other processing areas to be put back into it, and that's very important because if we if we just always pump through from here and we take the and we let the uh, thermofluid take the shortcut, then we'll end up with this pipe being full all the time. We won't be able to pump any thermofluid out of this tank, and therefore eventually, in theory, the tank might fill up. So I've made sure that yes, this pump will pump all the time, and these pumps will only pump when there's space in the tank. So things are basically the system is basically running okay, and that seems to have helped quite a lot in that we now have a decent amount more um uh, more thermofluid available up here as you can see we've got we've got a full or a most a 90% full uh, pipe going all the way over to here and this one is 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 almost 90% full and that's that's good enough all of these telescopes can now well in theory all the telescopes can now work however i noticed just as i was starting on this section that we'd run out of data cards down here and that feels like a weird thing to run out of i don't know how that's happened but we do seem to be uh, we seem to have had another delivery of those now they the data cards have arrived they're filling up the um, the buffer ba the belts along here and pouring down down over here so I guess we were just getting through an enormous number of them but it's yeah it's, it's a weird thing to have run out of as I say um, but I can't trace it back and find out where the problem is because there doesn't seem to actually be a problem right now maybe lots of the science areas ask for data cards at the same time I'm, I'm not sure but anyway, that means we now have the uh, we now have a nice, healthy supply of these exposed frames coming through, and uh, this is artificially good at the moment because there'll be a load stockpiled well on the belt along here and in all the telescopes up here as well. And so this might not stay quite as good for all that long. How, uh, so it's something that's still worth keeping an eye on. But for now, we seem to have a good, healthy supply of, of the cards coming through, and. Yeah, some of the machines along here are making catalogues. This is not quite as good as I would like it to be. I think further, I say, I, say I think further, further um, investigation is required. But to be honest, as I've said a few times now, I'm not sure how much it's worth going in and tweaking these things, given that we are really quite close to the end of the game, and we've probably got enough uh, astro science stockpiled in the in these warehouses up here and on the belts and just generally everywhere around here in these boxes as well. So it probably doesn't actually matter. We've probably got enough to finish the game. Uh, but it still feels like we should... I, I still like going around and making sure things are working properly. I'm sort of tempted to say we should do some massive infinite researches just to stress test the factory a little bit. However, I'm a bit worried that if we stress test it, it's going to break. So maybe we won't do that, just in case. <clears throat> and the next thing to look at is the Talos Naquium ship, which has had... Um, some issues in its in its time and has ended up with some things being unloaded that shouldn't have been probably because i've been messing around with numbers at the other end and so the, sh the uh, ship has gone oh dear we've got too much stuff in here let's unload it into the into the dump chest over here and that's why we have some vulcanite some enriched vulcanite and some sulfur in this uh, warehouse over here and we do have a disposal system at the bottom it's capable of passing it around and putting it back in over here to be passed round again and then in theory be recirculated and reused and be taken out to tell us because this is all stuff that we do need out there it's just we had too much of it and it was in the wrong places. And so in, in an attempt to sort of take at least some of it out, I had a look at how much space there was in this warehouse here and there was a certain amount. So I came over and I, I set a, a, a limiter on here so to sell this to run until we got down to 18,000 uh, Vulcanite. And now we've got to down to 18,000 Vulcanite in there so that's that 
that's good. We've taken out quite a lot of the Vulcanite. However, there's still quite a bit in here. So what I should probably do now is come in here and set this one to uh, maybe 1,000 Vulcanite like that. And then it, then the belt can flow again. We'll, we'll dump a load of Vulcanite out down here, and that'll play past around here and through and be put, sent up the uh, the chute up here. And we'll get, we'll, we'll we'll stock we'll put another 17,000 Vulcanite into this warehouse here, but or into or rather into these warehouses up here. But that's okay. There is a decent amount of space in them. Well, actually, there isn't that much space in them. Maybe this was a mistake. I probably probably shouldn't have done that. In time, I would like to get rid of all the stuff in this warehouse over here, pass it around like this, and get it put back into the system up here so it will actually get used. And if we look at this, well, actually, 17,000 Vulcanite, because it stacks so high, actually isn't that much space. So I think we'll be able to fit all of that into the into the other warehouses. And I'm sure when this ship comes back next time, it's going to want quite a lot of Vulcanite so we can feed some more into it. Speaking of this ship, well, I talked yesterday about how we had a bit of a shortage of the Vitalic Reagent, and you can see that the filters down here are set to be loading Vitalic Reagent, and, and Methane Ice as well, but uh, Methane Ice is just a top-up. We don't, we don't care about exactly how much goes through, but we do care about the Vitalic Reagent, and that's why the ship hasn't, hasn't left yet. Uh, and so, if we follow the... Um, if we follow the belt back, we can we'll see we will find out the reason we have no vitalic reagent there is because we're not feeding it out over here in, in sufficient quantities, and that means we're not that's because we're not bringing enough of it over from Big Red, and we discovered why we've had such a problem with the vitalic reagent over the last few weeks. Over in Big Red orbit, we previously accidentally had some filters set on on these uh, inserters along here, and that meant they were only inserting a certain types of things into the spaceship. And I think, as far as I remember, I think it was inserting wood, copper ore, stone, and another junk, maybe coal, another junk item anyway. And so that meant that the spaceship was coming over here, it was just picking up those particular junk things, and then flying them off to Norbit, and then coming back again, filling up with all those junk things and flying off to Norbit. And as long, because we produce so much junk, especially in the form of wood when we're doing the, uh, the processing over here, you can see there's, there's seven, 16, 17,000 wood in each one of these warehouses. And that's that's a lot of wood. Like if, we sort, if we sort it, that's a lot of wood and a lot of copper ore and coal and stone and so on. So we were finding that we were, yeah, we were still able to keep the ship flying even with just that junk. However, we were gradually filling these warehouses up with all the other things, mostly the Vita products, the things we you know the things we actually wanted. Uh, and so the, eventually there was we got to the point where there wasn't room to put any more wood or copper ore or coal or stone into these warehouses. And at that point, the system jammed up and we realised the ship wasn't flying around. Things weren't working well. And so we came out to have a look at it and see what was going on. Because when it was transporting all the junk across, it, it seemed to be working. Unless we went in and looked really closely going, hey, why is there so? Why have we got so much junk and not in, none of the stuff we actually want? You wouldn't really notice because the system seemed to be working. Uh, and so once it eventually failed, we realised there were problems and we looked into it and discovered it was, the, it was just the filters on here that were, were set wrongly. And so now we are loading up the, uh, the ship here with quite a lot of stuff that we want to get rid of. And down on the ground we're able to chuck lots of the things we do want to keep into the train. Hang on a minute, that train's not right. They're, we're having pro oh, we're having problems again over here with unloading. We've got too much sulphur. Ah, we've completely filled this warehouse up with sulphur. Uh, that is a problem. So I guess we're going to have to do something like that and that to um, to get the uh, to get everything out from here to get everything out of the warehouse uh, and allow the sulphur to start flowing again. Which means we can then start to empty the trains again. And that means if we can empty the trains again, then we can start to load the trains again and we can start shipping things up up back up to bigger orbit. And uh, and you know the system might actually work. But as it is. Um, yeah, there's, there's 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 some problems here. We've just got the same tra the trains running round and round and round with the uh, the same loops of uh, of things that are all needed down here on the planet. Uh, in fact, that one's going round again because I'm oh, I don't know why. Probably just because it's having trouble unloading. Um, but at least now, if we're getting a bit more a bit more general stuff unloaded, maybe things will be okay. But we are, it is a little bit problematic that we can only pull the sulphur out at at a single um, yeah a blue belt across here. So um, yeah, that's not great. Um, we'll have to come in, come over and fix this up a bit more thoroughly in, in the future. Maybe we're just asking for too much uh, sulphur over here, I'm, I'm not sure. And speaking of all of the junk that's being shipped out from Big Red, uh, Tristan discovered that there was so much wood coming through that the system couldn't cope with it. So presumably down here, yes, here we go, we've now got additional uh, warehouses to store all of the, uh, all the wood. Is, is it this one? Yes, I think it... Yes, it comes down here, it goes into, goes into here, then into here, then here, then here, then here. So we now have a much larger quantity of wood storage available because well, we, we, we seem to be producing so much of it out on Big Red. We need to do something with it. And um, and this is that something. Tristan has now made sure that there is room for everything to get, go in down here. Additionally, with trains and Norvis and Tristan and so on, um, we, it was observed that the uh, the Immersite products over here, and well, the, the products in general over here, weren't getting taken away in, in, uh, sufficiently by the, by the trains because the... Um, the 
these pickup stations are quite a long way out on the edge of the base over here. So if a train wants to take Immersites to perhaps up here, it's going to go, oh, I'll, I'll go and pick it up from down here rather than rather than all the way over here. Or if it wants sulphur, it's going to go, well, I'll pick it up from down here rather than all, all the way over here. Um, because trains are lazy, they want to go to the closest place possible. Fair enough. And so that, but that meant that all of these places over here, these these stations, which are supposed to be dump stations, just getting rid of products whenever whenever we have any of them available, weren't getting rid of the the uh, the stuff they had they'd been stockpiling. And so in order to get round that, Tristan's put in these two stations down here, which a train will never actually stop at. However, the trains will route to them when there is an excess of whatever the thing is over here that they're supposed to be dealing with. So you can see, for example, there's a red cable going to this station, and we are saying that when L is greater than zero, we will enable it. So that comes down, then that's being tra traced up here, all the way up to um, this station. So essentially, when there is enough Immersite in, in this warehouse here, that this station is going to start calling for trains, this station will also start calling for trains. And the trains that will go to this station like, uh, are ones like this one. So they will try and go to, when, when, they've, when they've gone to an Immersite crystal drop and dropped off all the crystals they've got, they will try and go to an Immersite crystal bonus routing station, which is this one. And so if they, if they can, if this station is active, they will come out to here. And then once they get to here, then the nearest Immersite pickup station is going to be the one in, in this block here. So they'll go straight to that one. If the station, if there isn't enough over here to be picked up, then these stations will be red, will be disabled, as you can see here. And that means that the trains won't come out to here. They will instead go straight to the other station and pick up. So they won't travel all the way out here and then go, oh, well, I'm here, but I'll need to go all the way back over here again. Because that's a huge waste of time and train uh, and uh, uh, train capacity. Instead, they'll, they'll just skip that station and come straight to the one down here to pick up the inner side. And this is one of the places where using enable disable is more effective than using the uh, train limits because you can, t if you turn a station off like that, then a train will, will just skip it in its routing and will go somewhere else instead. And so there, most of the time, it doesn't really matter whether you turn stations on or off by using train limits or by using uh, an enable disable. However, there are a few clever edge cases that you can do with the, uh, with, with, if you know that the two is working slightly different ways. And you can do little tricks like this. Over on Kothar, Mike noted that the uh, the dirty iridium water wasn't being processed through quickly enough. Now it's, it, it has now been fixed because he sorted it, but previously it wasn't being dealt with quickly enough. And he noted that the problem for this was he wasn't getting rid of the stone fast enough. So when you when you clean out the irid dirty iridium water, you get out a certain amount of um, a crushed iridite, which can be passed back into the system for for reprocessing. You get some of your um, cation beads back, which you can reuse, and you get some uh, some water out as well, which you can blow off into the atmosphere as he's doing over there. But you also get a certain amount of stone. And so you have that stone coming down here. You can see you can see all the all the uh, filters on these splitters, making sure everything goes in the correct directions. The stone comes down here, and was being passed down into these pulverizers here, which would then turn it into sand that could be then taken down here. And presumably this is being turned into hydrogen chloride over here. Great. So that's, that's a good theory. However, that backed all the way up and therefore wasn't being processed. But unfortunately, that backed all the way up here and wasn't being taken away. Wasn't being used up fast enough. And so, in order to get around that, he's put in this overflow here, which takes it away and puts it into the uh, into the general disposal system where it's taking away all of the byproducts from core mining. And so that's a uh, that was just going straight into the train to be taken over, taken to the spaceship to be taken over to Norvis, where it's then going to be processed and used for everything else that we use stone for over there. And that's basically a completely bottomless pit. So he's able to just keep sinking it in over there. However, this belt has stopped, and we can note that this belt has stopped because um, this warehouse over here is full, the warehouse over here is full because the trains aren't, don't seem to be flowing, and the trains aren't flowing because up here they're unable to empty properly because there is no spaceship here, and this is all filled up. And the spaceships have all stopped running because we have enough iridium. So it looks like a problem. However, it is not a problem. Um, it just means it, it is the op exact opposite of problem. The system has ground to a halt because it, everything is full. We have enough iridium. So, yep, no concerns there. This is, this is working really, really well. We've got enough iridium, so the production has stopped because you've got to put it somewhere if you make it. And we haven't got anywhere to put it now, so that's good. Mike says he thinks the cause of this problem was due to the interruption of the Vulcanite supply uh, previously. Because if you remember, I had some I had some issues on Agnair with trains not going the right way, and and the throughput just wasn't enough. But I, I fixed those all a, a week or two ago. But the problems have sort of rippled their way through the system and finally appeared on uh, over here on Kothar. So it seems because the Vulcanite wasn't arriving in over here, that meant the red beads weren't being made. But the crushing was still running down here and producing all the stone to make the uh, uh, up here in order to make the uh, and, and the, but not using it but not using the sand up fast enough, which caused it to build up and all the way back up to here and cause it to jam. Um, 
I'm not quite. I'm not 100 percent sure of the exact sequence of steps there. But I'm I'm happy to believe him. This seems like a reason. This does seem like the sort of thing that could cause could cause a problem, which is why it's important to have these sort of the the emergency overflow valves like this that he's got in here. So yeah, I, I can happily believe that that's what happened, but I'm not quite sure I followed the logic exactly. I, I suppose it depends what order things get produced and used up in when the system goes to sleep um, because one of the uh, intermediates has been pulled out and then when it kicks back in again. So yeah, I think uh, hopefully we can keep the Vulcanite supply up and running. But even if we don't, we've now got we've now got an overflow here, so things should be fine even in the future. And so production of things is going. It is sort of going. We've got a bit of an excess of plastic uh, at the moment uh, because this this is an overflow. So this this is red up here because we've got more than we would like to have. But I think we're using that. We'll we'll prioritise using that up. Hopefully this will be okay. We'll get rid we'll get rid of the plastic reasonably soon. We're still short of green belts. That's due to the immersion problems that we've been seeing. Uh, eventually, once we have enough immersite and immersion plates, then this will catch up and we'll have have green belts available again. Um, although we do have a lot of purple belts, so I guess the green belts are being turned into purple belts. So this, this one's sort of been prioritised. Uh, so we just need to make sure we build everything out of purple belts. That's fine. They're even better. The advanced science packs we're still not measuring, so we don't care about those. Um, the Astro One catalogs. Those are the ones we were looking at earlier, um, where we had, where we had had the shortage of memory cards. Hopefully, that's now going to have a chance to catch up we'll um we'll keep an eye on that but it's probably going to be all right uh we're not measuring those we still got a little bit of a problem with the uh, with a couple of the vitamolange things but then that's that's playing a bit of catch up at the moment we seem to have a shortage of naquium now i think that's probably we are going to have shortages of input on that one um we're going to need to get more sulfur over there and we're going to need to get more vitalic reagent over there so once that's running fine then the ship can leave it can take over more sulfur over to uh, talos and we can start making the naquium a bit a bit more effectively i think but other than that it looks like things are going really really well we have good supplies of nearly everything uh, and and I was going to say, and even the things that we don't have supplies of haven't been a problem for long. No, that's not true at all. The green belts have been a problem for well, it's filled up the bar. It's filled up the bar, so we don't know. We don't even know how long it's been a problem for. Um, the Astro catalogs have been a problem for absolutely ages as well. So that's a shame we didn't notice that sooner. The Vitas, they, they come in from time to time. We rip through them quite quickly. And the Naquium is a little bit of a concern and has been for a while. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get that working we'll, as, as much as required. And then we'll finish the game and never have to worry about it again <laughs> until we start playing Space Exploration 0.7 or something like that. Uh, that is not a promise. I don't know when, when or if that'll happen. And so we can now get on to the uh, the researches. We have we finished long range star mapping twenty three, which is probably why we're having such a problem with the um, the astro science because it uses so many of all of them. But we finished that, and that gave us another uh, another list of coordinates. Um, but as as I touched on yesterday, these researches have become a bit less uh, necessary than otherwise, and I won't say more than that because of uh, spoilers. We picked up swarm safeties seven to ten because we had some uh, we had quite a lot of robots crashing recently because we were trying and uh, some of them were starting to do damage to things because we were doing massive bot frenzies to take out huge amounts of space scaffolding to our spaceships and get them loaded up. That's probably not going to be a thing that happens again, but we thought you know we might as well do a, a few of these uh, bot safety uh, sorry bot swarm safety researches and they're quite cheap on the research packs they use as well, so you know just chuck a few of them in. Why not? And we've done Factory Spaceship 5. We're working on Factory Spaceship 6 because that's the next one. It's currently uh, currently running. We are mumble, mumble, mumble percent through it. Uh, it takes 16,000. And as you saw, we're having some problems with the energy science packs because we don't have the quantum processors, because we don't have the MSI crystals. So all of our problems seem to come back to either Immersite or Vitalic Reagent at the moment. So those seem to be the, the, the big things that need a big, a good push. And both of those have been sort of maybe possibly fixed we just need to see if, we've, if we're producing enough of them and whether it's going to flow through fast enough and so that's the end we shall be back tomorrow where we'll be carrying on with the uh, with, with the um, with the big end game puzzle and maybe even completing it we shall we shall see we shall see how we, how well we've got on with the maths over this weekend i've not had time to have a look at it unfortunately we'll see if anyone else has and if not maybe we'll have a panic frenzy of just sort of poking at the uh, poking at the uh, the system and seeing if we can get it to work properly uh, i won't say more than that again because spoilers uh, and yes tomorrow's stream will be fairly spoiler heavy because we're going to be working quite closely on with the um, with the, with the end game puzzle and hope as i say hopefully sorting it out solving it and making it work. I shall then be back on Wednesday for some more Satisfactory, where again, I'm on the, I'm sort of on the home straight. All of the things that we need for the uh, fi to finish off the, um, the game are being made. They're just being made incredibly slowly, so I need to work out where the bottlenecks are, whether we're actually making enough copper and, and iron to keep everything running, whether that's the problem, or whether it's just down to the, pro the fact that we're not making them fast enough because I haven't put in enough machines. So I'm going to be going in and doing a very, very manual copy-paste of a lot of things, I suspect. Then at the weekend, we'll have the normal Factorio catch-up videos where we'll be talking about 
what happened in the last stream and uh, and a bit of a summary of what's been going on in the game. And once we finish the game, as I've been saying, we're going to do a bit of a, a Factorio retrospective where we'll we'll talk about how the game went, what we liked, what we didn't like, how the things the things that were difficult, the things that were easy, the things that were fun, the things that were uh, frustrating, and and just and sort of get and run through and, and and talk about how the base came together and how how the game went. So um, I hope you'll come along to see that. And if you have any questions you'd like to answer, drop them in the uh, either as a comment on this video or in the uh, in the Discord, and we'll talk it through and uh, see what sort of answers we can come up with. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If so, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.